So it's like, fuck, I've only got 10 seconds. Her watch is going off for 10 seconds until the alarm goes. Sees him. And then she tackles Freddy. And then the alarm goes off and she's just like, oh, I am crazy. Ah, there's Freddy. And then that's when Home Alone begins. <laughs> he opens and the door and a sledgehammer yeah, comes down and hits him in the yeah, crotch. Yeah, <laughs> crotch. And then he falls back. And by the way, if you watch the any other version except for the one that you watched and the blue, like the Blu-ray, the, the widescreen version, if you watch any of the full screen ones, you can see the mattress that the fucking, uh, the, the stuntman fell on. And also, uh, scared the shit out of Wes because of the way he fell, like, he like as we're pro wrestling fans, you know, he fell on his neck. He yeah, you're like, easily. Ooh. Yeah, there was a, like an oh shit, there could be some paralyzing there. But then yeah, so he basically so chases her down to the basement. She throws some kind of lighter fluid on him that she had stashed at the that base she had stashed at the stairs, and he's like going like I'll kill you slow, and then she fucking throws it at him, and he's like no no no, lights him on fire, and this actually won an award. This firewalk that this stuntman does, because he chases her right up the whilst stairs. Whilst on fire. Whilst on fire. Up the stairs. She knocks the fucking, she knocks him down, and he falls down the stairs, and then starts going back up. That was the longest fire burn in history at that point. Hmm. Um, and they weren't sure how it was going to go, because they're like, wait. Like, cause they basically, how long does this guy have yeah, to be on fire? Well, no, it was one of those things where, like, they kept going, and thankfully they kept going, but, like, he's got a certain signal, like, when he's ready to be put out, he'll, you know, fall down or whatever in the way, and they kept it in the movie of him falling down, by the way. So his fall, like, if him, like, okay, I'm done, is in the movie. But when he fell down the stairs, he was supposed to stop and fucking do it, but he didn't. He kept, he got up and kept, went back up. And that's when he went down, and they were like, "Oh man!" And he won an award for that that year, like one of the best well, stunts or whatever, because so. it was the the um, <clears throat> it was the longest fire walk in history. Ironically, in a movie we will not be covering, Freddy vs. Jason, the guy who lights himself up as Jason in that movie, that became the, the longest, longest fire walk in history. Huh. Ironically, I don't think it is now, but it was then. Interesting. Um, but yeah, I thought that was cool. So she goes up. She's like <clears throat> knocking on the window to try to get the cop to go get it. Like, go get my dad, you asshole! Yeah, well, the cop's like, uh, "Is that everything will be all right? Go get my dad, you asshole!" And he's just like, he's still standing there. He goes, "Maybe I should tell the lieutenant." Why don't you go get you the think? lieutenant? Like, yeah, her his daughter is like, dad! yeah, like, don't let him kill me too. And then he fucking does, and they run over, and there's fire. Break the door going down. up the stairs. Like, yeah, and then steps. they they go to look at the front. And she's like, okay, and then. The, the, she's like, oh my god, and there's footsteps leading up to that the That are room. all on fire. Um, because earlier she'd put her mom to bed. She gave her a bottle and put her to bed. <laughs> um, very symbolic. And then, so, he's on top of her mom, fire-fucking her, I don't know. Because um, they both break into the room, her and her dad. Yeah, her and her dad, and then her dad sort of puts a sheet over top of Freddy and whatnot, and then... Like, that wouldn't put a fire out. Nope, not at all. Not a fire that big, anyway. <clears throat> and then her skeleton slowly falls into the bed. I I got nothing. Yeah. This doesn't make sense. And then um, the bed is fine. The bed's cool. Again, we don't explain the rules of how this makes sense, because they're both awake, so I got nothing. And then they're like, well, I guess we're done here. And the dad walks out, and she goes, okay, just wait a minute. And then she's standing there. The door shuts on its own. Freddy pops up, slices the sheet open, and then she goes, Oh, I get it now. <coughs> I know what you are. You're dead. You're you know, you're nothing to me. I take back all the power I gave you and he's like, You what? Um Yeah, she wants her friends back. Yeah. Like, I want my friends like, and, I want my my friends friends back. and my mother back. I want everything back to the way it was. And like I turn my back on you. Apparently this became very vulgar. Like the idea was that she grew up way too fast and then she got really vulgar. Um, like she calls him like a fucker and everything like that. Like get very vulgar. Hey, you got a little dick too. <laughs> kind of, yeah. In the original, in original filming, that's how it was. But all, all it is is she just goes, you're nothing, you're shit. And then she turns and as she's about to open the door, he goes to slash and he just disappears. Like, no! Yeah. yeah. Into the fucking into ether. The ether. And then she opens the door and it's outside and it's bright and fucking happy and shit. It's daytime and she's yeah. dressed for school mm -hmm. and her mom's cool. And, and her mom walks in and she goes, Oh, it was a nice day. They say you bottomed out if you don't remember the night before. You know, honey, I'm going to stop drinking. I just don't feel like it anymore. Okay. Air friend, uh, Glenn pulls up in the convertible. Yeah, and then, because uh, she's just like, oh, did I keep you up last night? No, I guess I just slept heavy. Yeah. Hmm, funny, funny. 
And then Glenn's like, can you believe this fog? I believe anything is possible. Like, we're getting so sappy. Because we're Glenn and Nancy and yeah. Rod and Tina. They're all Everybody's alive in there and... and happy and smiling. And I'm like, first of all, Rod's wearing a fucking floral shirt. Like, that don't make sense yeah. to me. And then the fucking, the, the convertible top. Plops up and they all laugh like, <laughs> but it's and then it the starts print. going. Well, it's and the like, print. It's the sweater. The fr- yeah, the the red and green sweater print. And he's just like, oh, that's funny. And then the door, the windows start rising up, and the doors are locking, and the roof uh, locks in place. And he's like, hey, I'm not doing this. I'm not doing this. And she's screaming to her mother, and her mother's still waving happily. Like, and then they drive away slowly. And then she's still smiling, and it's saying one, two. Freddy's coming for you. Three, four. Better lock your door. Bang. Freddy's fist goes through the window. He pulls the mother through that tiny window and then we get the rest of the song credits and credits so who wins what do you mean like there's no freddy's clearly alive yeah uh she didn't win she just survived that dream yeah um i think that's what we imply um because i how she gets out of the whole thing where she's in the car and whatnot they never explain it because spoiler alert nancy doesn't come back until the third movie so and that's a long ways away, by the way, as far as their timeline goes. Like, the timeline for these movies is, like, the next one doesn't take place until 1989 in the timeline. Mm-hmm. Nope. <laughs> if you look at that movie, there's no fucking way it's any other time than 85. Um, so, but, yeah, there's yeah. a nightmare That was on a nightmare Elm on Elm Street. Now, um, I don't think, mm. going forward, as we're mm. going to be doing the rest of these movies, mm-hmm. it's going to be quite as... <laughs> what? Note-taking... <laughs> No, no, God, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <coughs> Sorry. Um, yeah, no, the only reason I was able to do as much as I was with this film... <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> sure. It's very dusty in here. Yeah, um, apparently I've just, I've spent to the point where my entire body is shutting down. No, I'm not kidding. I read an entire book um, with the same uh, name called Never Sleep Again, The Elm Street Legacy, which is literally a 500-page book. That is the just the making from start to finish of this, this film, yeah. this one film. So the rest of them will not be this long. Um, I don't even know how long it was, but I'm sure it's a long fucking time. Um, About two hours. Jesus. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's um, it's yeah, basically. So this is this is just this movie. I know more about the making of this movie than I know about myself. Yeah. Um, and I'm actually kind of glad it's done. Yeah. Uh, this was two weeks. All those notes and everything like that, that took me two weeks. Well, when we started this movie podcast, yeah. you knew this was going to be your... Mm-hmm. My one chance to talk about this. Because when I say I'm an obsessive Freddy Krueger fan, you have no idea. I have well over 200 pieces of Freddy Krueger merchandise. Um, I have pieces of clothing that look like him. There's pictures and stuff like that all over my apartment. I absolutely love this character, and I have since I was a little kid. Uh, One of these movies, and I'll get to it, is my favorite movie of all time. It's also my favorite childhood movie. Because I saw... One of of these movies I saw for the first time when I was... um, uh, 10 years old. Appropriate. (laughs) Yeah. Well, it's it's my parent. I grew up in the 80s, man. We just watched R-rated shit. And, yeah, one of these movies I saw for the first time when I was 10, and it became one of my favorite childhood movies. I recorded it off of First Choice, which eventually became TMN, and I watched it so many times to the point where when we finally get to that movie, you will hear me say verse and chapter every fucking line of dialogue. That one might be as long. Yeah. Um, Although there's not really much on the making of it, so not really. Yeah. So... We continue yes. with the with the Nightmare franchise, yes. um, but then it won't be a continuous no, seven. No, we're going to go to... Uh, we're going to do two at a time yeah. and split it. We'll, and, we'll explain more next week. Yeah, and then the rest will be, the rest will be, um, like, night, we'll be doing the films of Wes Craven. Now, you and I haven't even talked about what we're going to do, which ones we're going to do. So we will let you know the first time, the first one next week, because yeah. we don't even know which ones yet. Yeah. Um, actually, I did want to talk to you about that, yeah. so we got that, so there you go. But for next week... Yes. We are going again to the 80s, mm-hmm. November 1st, 1985. Good. I didn't know when it was. To, I knew this one, I didn't know that one. To look at A Nightmare on Elm Street. To, yes. I don't <laughs> Freddy think... Is, Freddy's Revenge. Freddy's Revenge. Um, <laughs> spoiler alert, it is one of the leading gay movies of the 80s. Yep. And that's not me saying that. That is actually true. That and is we factual. Will, and we will cover that next week oh, when yes. we speak about it. Absolutely. 
So for this very long episode... We're not done yet. Oh, yeah, sorry, MVP. We Jesus. have to MVP and rate it, sir. Uh, well, <laughs> I think it's both 10 on 10s for oh, us. Oh, yeah, I mean, yeah, this is one of the greatest obvious. movies ever made. Um, uh, my MVP is going to be Nancy. Mm. I'm going to try to make a conscious effort to not make it Freddy every time. That's probably <laughs> going to be more difficult in the later half of oh, yeah. the series. There's there's now. one there's one movie in particular. There's no way you can't. I mean, she does carry this movie too, mm-hmm. obviously, because Freddy's only in it for seven minutes. Yeah, uh, it's obvious that it's going to be Nancy for this, but you will. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm. It's got to be Nancy. Oh, um, I, was, I thought you were going to go. I was going to pick but him, just, but just, Nancy just, is just, kind of such... She's almost a, in every scene. She in is. This film. I mean, this is her movie, and to say that she's not probably the most entertaining in this movie is a lie. Um, Fred is great, but... Okay, how, how, this is how I'll put this. Fred is great, Freddy is better. Yeah. If that makes any sense. Um, like although, he obviously, <laughs> as as the series goes on, becomes the he star. Does. Of the show. There is a, there is a couple times where I will say that there is no doubt that Robert England slash Freddy Krueger is the greatest part of the movie. Um, not next week, by the way. Mm-hmm. Um, but this movie, I do think Nancy kind of because of the fact that she carries the movie, she does an amazing performance. Um, and a lot of times, she's given weird dialogue that I don't understand. Sometimes but she makes work. Yeah. <clears throat> so credit to uh, Heather Landenkamp. Yes. Uh, Again, next week, we will be continuing with uh, Nightmare mm-hmm. on Elm Street 2, Freddy's Revenge. Yes. But until then, mm-hmm. you were Steve. You were Justin. And we're way back and gone. Whatever you do, don't fall asleep.